Our paper is New Potential Based Bounds for Prediction as Expert Advice. I will first provide some background on prediction as expert advice, then I will summarize our contribution, including an upper bounds framework and a lower bounds framework, then I will mention an extension of this framework. Prediction with expert advice is a classic problem in online machine learning. We focus on the fixed horizon version where the number of prediction rounds is fixed. At each round, the predictor player uses guidance from a collection of experts with the goal of minimizing the difference regret between the player's loss and that of the best performing expert hindsight. It's an adversarial model where the data has no distributional assumptions. While player strategies often use potentials, for example, exponential weights, Adversary strategies are randomized. For example, IED coin flips. We will frame our contribution in the context of previous work. Rothland showed that potentials arise as relaxation of the minimax value of the game. Uh, Rothland developed a related PD based viewpoint on player potentials. Our conceptual advances are that this viewpoint extends to adversaries, leading to lower bounds. More technically, Finding better regret bounds is equivalent to finding better solution for certain PDs. The practical impact is understanding how potentials work, give guidance on choosing good potentials. Applying these advances, we obtain not only a fresh perspective, but also improved bounds. A representative definition of prediction as expert advice is the following. In each period, T of the player determines the mix of an expert to follow, by choosing a probability distribution over n outcomes. The adversary allocates losses to them by choosing a probability distribution over an n-dimensional hypercube. Expert losses and player's choice of the expert are sampled from the respective distributions, and both samples are revealed to both parties. In this context, the instantaneous vector value to regret r tau tracks the difference between the loss of the player in the prediction period tau minus the loss of each expert. The accumulative, accumulated regret, xt, uh, is simply the sum of the instantaneous regrets r tau for all previous periods. Uh, the final time regret is the largest entry of x at final time, evaluated an expectation over the player and adversary's randomization. Potential-based player strategies are familiar. For example, exponential weights, potential bounds, they regret above. The player controls the increase in the potential phi as the game proceeds. Specifically, choosing the player strategy to be the gradient of phi eliminates the first order Taylor term uh, in the expansion of phi as the regret of all for all adversaries choices of Q. We will now develop our viewpoint on potentials and we will use exponential weights uh, to illustrate it in the context of upper bounds. Our viewpoint and potentials uses the value function. Our time counting convention is that the starting time t, uh, capital, capital T is negative and zero is the final time. We also assume that the player is Markovian, that is a time t can only depend on t and the cumulative regret x at that time. The value function VP is the expected final time regret achieved by P. If the game starts at T with realized regret X and assuming the adversary behaves optimally, it is characterized by the dynamic program at final time zero. The value function is simply the max function. At an earlier time, the value function is equal to the value function at the next period assuming uh, the adversary and the player, uh, the, assuming that the player behaves in accordance with the chosen strategy and the adversary behaves optimally. Our general definition of an upper bound potential is a function that solves the following PDE. The first line of this PDE, the first inequality of this PDE is there to ensure that W does not increase as the game evolves. The second inequality ensures that the potential W bounds the regret at final time. Lastly, the third equality, the equality um, ensures that 
w is linear in the direction of the vector of all ones. This is reasonable because the max function is also linear in the direction of the vector of all ones. The player associated with uh, w is equal to the gradient of w, and this construction leads to an upper bound uh, w uh, of vp bound is upper bounded by w. We'll sketch the proof next, but let me mention that um, this bound bounds the regret above because the value function evaluated at the time when the game starts with accumulate uh, starting time t, capital T, and accumulated regret zero is equal to the final time regret. For the exponential weights player strategy, the potential that satisfies our definition is uh, given um, at the bottom of the page of the slide. We prove the upper bound in two steps. In step one, we control the increase in W. The increase in W due to changes of X equal to the instantaneous regret has the expression here uh, by linearity of W along um, vector all ones and by Taylor's theorem, um, this increase uh, is bounded by the uh, by the maximum second derivative and uh, or the exponential weights the second derivative is bounded by eta over 2. In this setting the player eliminated the first order term for all q by its choice of the strategy. The increase of w due to change in time is simply the partial derivative with respect to time, and for exponential ways it is equal to minus eta over 2. Therefore, by the PDE, the sum of the second spatial derivative and the first derivative in time is less than 0. Therefore, uh, as the game evolves, w does not increase. The second step will show the upper bound by induction. The initialization of the induction is given by the final value of w. The inductive hypothesis assumes that the bound is satisfied at t plus 1. And uh, the, we, we show that, therefore, the bound is satisfied at the earlier time q. The first uh, line follows by step one, we can add the bracketed term because it is less than zero. The second step follows by the inductive hypothesis. Uh, the, the second line follows by inductive hypothesis and the last line follows by the dynamic programming formulation of uh, the value function. Evaluating the potential for the exponential weights, WE at the beginning of the game gives us the best known regret bound uh, using, of course, our convention for losses. Our framework also works for, uh, for lower bounds. That's the main contribution of our paper. Uh, the adversary A is Markovian. Uh, we assume it is also balanced. That is, the adversary assigns the same expectation to um, the losses of each expert. The value function for this adversary has a sim similar dynamic programming characterization, and the lower bound potential is also a very similar object. Here, the inequalities are in a different direction from the upper bound potential because we need to control the decrease in the lower bound potential. Uh, since A is balanced, the first order term is eliminated, and we get the lower bound uh, U uh, lower bounds VA, module an error from higher order Taylor terms. This immediately gives us a lower bound on the grid. The classic randomized adversary uh, samples the loss of each expert from an IED rather than a random variable. We use the potential given by the explicit solution of the linear heat equation. We, we see that 
the expectation of the second derivative uh, with respect to this strategy uh, eliminates the mixed terms, mixed derivative terms, and therefore the only terms that survive are the diagonal terms, and um, therefore the expectation of the second derivative is equal to the Laplacian of u. Therefore, um, the potential given by the solution to the heat equation with the, um, uh, the diffusion factor kappa equals to one half uh, satisfies our definition of potential. This gives us a regret bound, which is the same as in the classic two based on the central limit theorem. However, our approach gives a new non-asymptotic guarantee, which is not present in the central limit theorem. Let us now show how our framework applies to the comb adversary that is studied in the literature. This adversary ranks experts by their losses and advanced even rank experts probability one half and odd rank experts with probability one half. It was conjectured that the comb adversary is optimal for general n and this optimality was confirmed for n equals three and n equals four. While we do not resolve this conjecture for general n, we show that for the same heat potential this kappa equals one half, the expectation of the second derivative with respect to the potential is greater than the Laplacian of the potential. Therefore, by our argument, by our um, framework, the calm adversary is at least as powerful as the randomized adversary. In particular, the calm adversary is doubly asymptotically optimal in TNN. Previously, this result was only known for the classic randomized adversary. We can also con uh, construct an improved adversary which we call heat-based adversary. In this setting, the adversary is a uniform distribution over the following set of Qs. Um, the Qs um, are the losses of experts. They are assigned pluses or minus ones, and our adversary is balanced in the sense that the um, uh, pluses, uh, uh, the experts that are advanced are in balance with the experts that are being set set back by this adversary. Uh, we obtained the best uh, known leading order in key constant, uh, kappa h, which, imp which, in which, uh, which improves from one half in the classic case. This adversary is also asymptotically optimal for n equals two. Let me briefly mention another class of potentials called max potential. It is an explicit solution of a PD involving the largest diagonal entry of the Hessian of U. This potential is asymptotically optimal for n equals two and n equals three. And for n equals three, uh, our framework improves the best known non-asymptotic bound. For different values of kappa, we obtain lower and upper bounds, and for small n and large t, the max base player out, uh, shown by pluses here on this, on this plot uh, outperforms uh, exponential weights which is shown by stars here. Uh, the discussion here focused on the fixed horizon problem, but in a separate paper, we extended this framework to the geometric stopping problem, where the final time is sampled from a geometric distribution. In conclusion, we offer a fresh PDE-based perspective on how to find potentials and why they work. This framework, uh, this uh, perspective applies to lower as well as upper bounds, and solutions of certain PDEs are good potentials. Thank you. And I can answer your questions. Now.